All right, let's do one more. I'm feeling productive today. And by productive, I mean <laughs> just sitting around watching movies yapping about them. You might be thinking, JT, why, why are you just chilling in bed? Because this is the 13th Puppet Master, or 14th Puppet Master. And if you think I'm getting out of bed to fucking watch this movie, <laughs> after two great ones and 11, 12 terrible ones, you are out of your goddamn mind. It's, I'm putting as little effort into, <laughs> into this one as possible. Now... This is from 2020. This is a spin-off of the Puppet Master franchise. This is Blade the Iron Cross. So this is a movie all about Blade. Again, I've never seen this, just like every Puppet Master from like the fourth one onward. And everyone has been in crushing disappointment <laughs> one after the next. I just want this, this franchise over with. And we're almost there. We got this. We got this. One after this, and it's another spinoff, and it has to do with Dr. Death, one of the other puppets. So, oh, God, fuck me. Let's watch <laughs> and talk about Blade the Iron Cross from 2020. Now, the only saving grace about the last, like, five films in this franchise, they're less than 90 minutes. This is an hour and ten minute long movie. 70 minutes. Thank Christ. Like, I'm hoping it's better. I mean, the littlest Reich, the last one. I did that live uh, discussion on it. Made you all suffer through it. <laughs> the gore was much better than anything in the in the franchise. That was the only good thing for me. And I still would never watch it again. So, who knows? Maybe this could be good? <laughs> I doubt it, man. Alright. So, some bitch is writing, <laughs> writing a note to her father. And she's having, she had, like, dreams and stuff. Blade the puppet, like, killing somebody or killing people or something. Like, it was so fast. And honestly, I'm not paying attention much to this movie. But she's writing to her father. And then she has all the case, Toulon's case, of all the puppets. And she sees Blade is hiding, like, behind the case for some reason. I mean, Blade's always the one that's on the run, man. He never needs injection, injections of that green shit. He never needs anything. He's just alive all the time. Everyone else, all the other puppets, they need those that fucking juju invect <laughs> injection. I don't know why I can't say injection tonight. It's not a word I really use often. I don't know. This This is not faring well already. But indeed, Blade is asleep this time, and she has a little bit of the green shit to uh, put it to him. Like with every one of these films, I always say, if they don't have the classic Puppet Master theme that I love so much in it, I'm automatically pissed. But... Since this is a spinoff and it's Blade's own movie, I will forgive this one for not having it. The opening score is actually pretty damn good in this. So, even though it's a spinoff, apparently this uh, is still in like the main timeline of the Puppet Master movies. They mentioned there's these fucking engineer scientist and he's doing all these weird experiments on some black dude and like bad CGI and stuff, um, and he ends up, uh, cool though, how he's like bleeding from the eyes and stuff like that, but they mention that he's trying to perfect the green reagent thing that brings people back to life, or inanimate objects to life, or it does a whole bunch of shit throughout this series. They mention that it's, Andrew, it's Andre Toulon's, uh, you know, it's his, his uh, invention. So Toulon is a thing, like, so... This isn't like some totally separate universe or anything like that. So this this one dude gets pissed off about the World War II because this is all in World War II again, which is a whole continuous theme throughout this whole franchise, and it does absolutely nothing for me. It does nothing here either. But he gets pissed off saying that the war is lost and blah, 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 and he storms out into some door, and then some person that they apparently experimented experimented on and brought back to life starts attacking the shit out of him it's not good like so far this is just not good at all 
apparently there's some dude with like some weird ass mask on like looks cool though so that's a positive yo this this motherfucker looks just like cabal from mortal kombat If anyone's in Mortal Kombat fans, you know Cabal, the guy with the two hooks, and he does the spinning wind attacks and shit like that, and he's got like the gas, metal gas looking mask. That's the type of mask this guy's wearing. It looks just like Cabal. So then uh, her, our main girl here, fuck if I know her name. She's a reporter, and she's trying to find some new story, but, like, there's killings that are going on, and this is, like, the, the third killing, and she's out, like, and the the body's just there? Like, <laughs> it seems like the body's just chilling there. The cops didn't take the body away? Unless I'm seeing it wrong, because then the cops show up, and they, like, start harassing them. But it's like the body's just chilling there, and she's taking, having her friend take pictures, her photographer. It, it's fucking weird. It's so dumb. Apparently, this cop, he says to the woman, I don't have a problem slamming a dame in the stomach. <laughs> Fucking crazy guy. And the bodies of these murders and shit, they're all burnt up for some reason. Now he's, this detective, or lieutenant, he's in interrogating her. And he's, she's saying, how did you guys find this body so fast? They didn't find it fast, so they, she was there first. Before the cops got there. So what the hell is that line about? This is so fucking boring. And we're only 15 minutes in, man. Oh, I don't know why I do this to myself. But let me make this clear. Even though I had such a bad time with these movies, the sequels especially. I love a lot of full moon pictures. Like, I get the hell they're supposed to be terrible. And great at the same time. But these just aren't. They're just boring as shit. Nothing goes on until like the last 10 minutes when the puppets decide to, to finally do something and kill some fuckers. This is just talking and, and, and it's not interesting dialogue. It's just drags. It just feels like it's padding. And if you have anything in a 70 minute movie that feels like padding, you done fucked up. Now there are six bodies, no leads. What will this lieutenant do? I don't give a fuck. Main chick's got nice tits, though. And Blade looks goddamn huge in this movie. He looks so much bigger. He's sitting up in a, in a wooden chair and in, like, the kitchen. And hit the puppet's body is taking up most of the chair. Like, this is a much bigger Blade than in the other films. Yeah, yeah, you know the Tubi drill. Fucking, they want me to tell you if you want a good time, go to a uh, uh, Butch Gardens. They got giraffes and shit. If you enjoy that, go have a vacation. You can save fifty percent up to, so probably not much, on tickets from Memorial Day weekend at Butch Gardens. Get on it. Only if you're in the Tampa area. And yes, I'm fully aware that watching a movie like. Blade, the Iron Cross by Full Moon, is a very big drop in quality from The Shining, Dead Alive, and Santa Sangre that I did recently. So maybe it's that too, but no, it's not, because every other film in this franchise past the second one is bad, man. Oh, God, even the commercials feel like an eternity. Oh, man. And the dialogue, it, it's cringeworthy. In certain scenes in this. It, it's so bad. So badly written. Alright, so... Th this girl, she has... Like a telepathic... Or psychic link with Blade? Or some shit? Because she's in bed, and then like... She's like, like literally, like... Body up in the air, like she's possessed and shit. And then there's like a... An energy radiating... Radiating off of her. And there was a police officer earlier that was spying on her when she was naked. That's when I mentioned her tits. The gore is great here, though, because as soon as, um, like, the cop is, is, like, in the place, he finds Blade, and he picks Blade up by the head, and his eyes pop out when she's, like, releasing that energy, and go right through his hand, and then Blade takes the knife and cuts right through his neck. Gore looks great. That's, that's a big plus. 
but God, it's it's just not good. It's just not enough. Same with Little is Reich with the last one. The gore was great, but everything else is still terrible. <laughs> and I will never rewatch it. Like it doesn't matter how good the the gore can be. This doctor and shit. He's still tr- the engineer, scientist, whatever the hell he is. He's still trying to figure out the elixir and. There's zombies because of the elixir not being the right one as two lawns. And so they're like, they're like boil ridden zombies. Zombies. Why? Like, there's always some weird shit thrown into these movies. There was the, the mummy characters from one of them that had the worst human disguise ever. And uh, the demons in, in the fourth and fifth one. And just, <laughs> It's just like the puppets aren't enough, man. Like, there's got to be more shit to throw. Then we get some random love scene with, like, a co-worker of the main girl. Some Mexican chick, Spanish chick. And this this girl, she just, she has, like, something on her on her tits. She, like, gets naked and on top of this guy. And then, like, she just rubs his face in her tits. And then she, he's just like, your scent is intoxicating. And he just passes out. And she puts a hat on and walks out. Like, so she's a spy or some shit? Who knows? Who cares? The puppet work, though, with Blade, just like with all these movies, the puppet work looks great. Like, the puppets moving around and doing their thing looks really good. Then we see Cabal from Mortal Kombat again. <laughs> Doing some weird shit. I don't even know what he's doing. Burnt some pictures. He 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 just burnt them for who knows what. Don't know what the pictures were. I'm I'm a halfway check now, guys. Like <laughs> if you can't tell by now. If you need groceries and shit delivered right to you, uh, Tubi's letting me to let me know, telling me to tell you, use uh, Shoprite's uh. Whatever the hell it is. <laughs> Instacart, that's it. Use their Instacart to get food delivered to your house so that way you never have to go out again. So the bad guys have the key to the elixir, but they can't decipher it without the main chick's notes. I don't even know who the bad guys are. <laughs> I, honestly, at this point, they're Germans. <laughs> no, because the guy stormed off, right? Because he was saying that the war that is lost and stuff. I who <laughs> I can't keep saying, man. Who cares? This is so bad. This is so bad. It's so boring. And now there's more gas mask cabal looking motherfuckers all over the place. So bad guys end up capturing uh the main chick and the lieutenant who have like a love thing going on, and they're gonna start experimenting on the girl and try to figure out Toulon's elixir. Again, man, the dialogue is terrible in certain most of the scenes here. It's so goddamn bad. So Blade shows up and tries to save the day. And again, good gore. That's the high point of this movie is the gore. And some of the puppet work here looks stupid. Like there's one shot when Blade goes to slice some person and you can see it's a little person in a costume. Like he's so big here. And then they end up unleashing their puppets, which are just fucking zombies, <laughs> the people they've been experimenting on. I mean, this is a cool shot, but it makes no fucking sense. Blade kills the main dude, and then Blade is covered in blood, and you can't miss it. He's a white-faced puppet. <laughs> it's all blood. And he puts his hat on, and when the hat passes his face, it's just magically white again, and there's no blood there. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. It's a cool shot, but it, it makes no goddamn sense. Apparently now there's a death ray th- that the scientists had programmed or some shit, and they don't know how to turn it off. This is getting so stupid. And the place blows the smithereens, and the top of the the structure and stuff, wherever they were inside, is a big iron cross. So there's there's your fucking title. And and that's it. Like, there's a short scene with the lieutenant and his boss at the end and shit. Moral of the story, th- this movie sucks. <laughs> this was such a waste. But one more. 
and I'm dreading it. So like, wait a, at least a month for Dr. Death because, like I've said in many of these videos, I can't watch them back to back or anywhere near close to each other or I might just off myself. So this movie sucks. Good night, guys. Thank you.